Amen. Come on, let's give Jesus a great hand clap of praise this morning. God is good. His mercy endureth forever. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you so much for coming. We're honored to have you. And we believe that God is doing great things. Amen. And we believe that in Jesus that the best is yet to come. How many believe that today? I believe that the best is yet to come in Christ. So we're honored to have you. We're in the middle of our series, Peacemakers, talking about the difference between a peacekeeper and a peacemaker. I'll define that here in just a moment. And I want to encourage us today with a message as you've been doing each week along these lines. And I just want to build your faith to move forward today because I believe that God can help us do it. Amen. So, Father, I thank you for this worship experience. I thank you for all the people watching through the online campus in different nations around our nation, around our state, and around our city. I thank you for everyone in this room and in this building this morning. We're honored and, and just so excited to have them. Lord, I think that you would move on us today. You would touch us. Any resistance, we would lay it down. Any distraction, we would set it aside. We receive freely from your word, and we give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen. Now, I believe this. In this series, we've been talking about being a peacemaker, and I believe that every one of us has the ability and the opportunity to be a peacemaker. Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. Amen. Now, how many know that our lives are busy, hectic, and how many have ever been overwhelmed at least one time in your life? So when those moments come, at least for me, when those moments come, it's easier to be a peacekeeper than it is a peacemaker because at times it requires extra energy. And sometimes we just don't have that to give. But I believe that great things happen when you and I push through and embrace being a peacemaker. And so you and I, I believe, cannot afford, as we do that, we cannot afford to live life by people-pleasing. And so this weekend, I want to preach a message entitled People-Pleasing and empower us to stop people-pleasing. Amen. One hand clap. That's all right. We're going to do it anyway. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, please turn to the book of Proverbs, chapter 29. Uh, as you're turning there or as they show it on the screen, I want to welcome my good friend Brandon Stewart. We love you from Seattle. He's awesome. Give him a hand. He's awesome. Helping us. Thank you for being here. The idea for us before we read these verses is a peacekeeper is someone, and I'm not, I'm not trying to play on words, but the Bible says peacemaker. He doesn't say a peacekeeper. A peacekeeper is someone that uh, could tend to live life in, in, the, in, the, in the lens of keeping everyone happy, not bringing up certain subjects, uh, avoiding the pink elephant, almost like, shh, don't do that. We don't want to make people mad. That's the tendency of a peacekeeper. And, you know, really it's easier to do that than it is to be a peacemaker. A peacemaker is someone that's seeking ways to make the peace. In other words, we embrace healthy confrontation. We seek truth. We're honest with people. We want to come to the highest point of unity, and we want to be open and clean. That's what a peacemaker does. And I believe that Jesus is the prince of peace, right? So he's God. He can do what we can't. So when I believe, I mean, I believe that when we, uh, when we step out and choose to be a peacemaker, it empowers Jesus to be the prince of peace in our situation. So notice in our Bible, Proverbs 29, verse 25, and then I'm going to read another set of verses in Thessalonians. But this verse in Proverbs says, Fearing people is a dangerous trap, but trusting the Lord means safety. Everyone say the trap. Now notice in, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 4 through 8, and then I'll get into this. He says, For we speak as messengers approved by God to be entrusted with the good news. Our purpose, notice this language, our purpose is to please God, not people. He alone examines the motives of our hearts. Never once did we try to win you with flattery, as you well know. And God is our witness that we were not pretending to be your friends just to get your money. As for human praise, we've never sought it from you or anyone else. As apostles of Christ, we certainly had the right to make demands of you, but instead we were like children among you, or we were like a mother feeding and caring for her own children. We loved you so much that we share with you not only God's good news, but our lives too. 
So in the first part of this message, I want to talk about you and I avoiding the trap of people pleasing. And the last part of the message, I want to break down these verses that we just read and show you three things that I think are practical steps we can take to not people please in our life. First, I believe this. There's a trap to avoid in our life. And the scripture says, fearing people is a dangerous trap. Now, people pleasing is really, to me, a secondary emotion to fearing people. And I have noticed this in my life, and maybe yours too, that after we leave junior high, after we leave high school, after we leave college, if we went and become adults, sometimes, maybe certain days, we tend to act like we're in junior high or high school still. Has anyone ever had those moments before? Some of you are honest people. You're going to heaven today. Not today, but you know, you're only, I'm going to heaven someday. Let me be clear. I qualify that. And it's easy to do that. And so when you and I have a tendency of people pleasing, really what that is, it's really a fear of people. We're afraid in people pleasing of a few things. What will people think of me if I step out and be different or really share what's in my heart? What will they do when I speak up and not just go along and, and just people please? Uh, will they be mad at me? A lot of adults, and I'm this way, I like everyone to be comfortable, be happy. I don't like it when people are mad at me. But you know what? We can't help that. But some of us don't like that. And so we avoid people being mad at us. But my dad has always told me, they're probably already mad, so get over it. <laughs> will, will they reject me? And there's so many other things that come along with this. Now, here's the trap of people pleasing. Just for your notes' sake, on the worship guide, if you're taking notes. The trap with people pleasing is people pleasing empowers us, really in a prison, to not share what's really going on. So, really, it breeds resentment. We can, re um, you know, it, uh, uh, in the end, resent the people we're trying to please. It can breed bitterness. This is huge. I mean, for people in church and outside of church, so no matter where you're at in the journey of your faith, this is something that I've seen that, I mean, so many adults do. People-pleasing just lends itself to passive-aggressive behavior, which means I'm mad at you, but I'm not going to tell you I'm mad at you, so I'm going to do little signals to tell you I'm mad at you, but never just tell you I'm mad at you. That's what my children do. Hello, somebody. This is what people-pleasing lends, I mean, it, it lends itself to this. So we're walking around trying to get the approval of people, but I believe Jesus has a better way for you and I to live. The Bible says that fearing people is a dangerous trap, but when we trust the Lord, we are brought to safety. Jesus wants to empower us not to keep the peace, folks. He wants to empower us to make the peace. And the reason why we're doing this series and why I preach this way so often is because I love doctrine, I love worship, I love the Bible. I'm a nerd about that stuff. I really am. But in reality, how are we living out Jesus? How are we living this with our, our family, our companies, you know, the people we work for, our sports teams, or whatever it is, our church? How are we living this out? We cannot afford to live life walking on eggshells, resenting people, being full of bitterness, being passive aggressive. You know, I believe Jesus wants to empower us to be bold, clean, open, free, in the light, and we live. Remember this statement, I believe the enemy thrives in secrets. He thrives in the shroud, and God wants us to come into the light and live. So you and I have the empowerment today to overcome this and to not people please. A great man of God said this statement. If we live by the praise of others, we will die by their criticisms. So when you and I are people pleasing, what we're doing is I want you to like me. I want to be approved in your clique. Isn't that kind of like junior high and high school? And remember that? You had the athletes, then you had the band, then you had the nerds, then you had the, you know, anyone have those people? Not so much, you didn't go to school? Okay. And so <laughs> we all had that, and, there was the, and, kind of, and we wanted to be accepted by groups. And so people pleasing is really, will you accept me? Will you like me? I want to fit in. And that's normal, but God has called us to be more than that. Yeah. He's called us to be a peacemaker. So I want to encourage us, before I get into this other uh, of these verses in Thessalonians, I want to encourage you to avoid the trap 
of people pleasing. It's a dangerous place. We think maybe it's safe. Man, if they like me, I'll be safe. If they accept me, I'll be safe. If they just approve of my attire or, or you know, my Instagram or my faith. No, 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 no. It's an unsafe place. Trusting in the Lord is the safest place to be. Jesus, his name is a strong tower. We can run into it and be safe. Amen. So you and I have the power in Jesus to decide I will not come from fear in my life. I choose not to be a people pleaser. I choose to be loving and upfront to all people. I don't, I don't shade it. I don't hide in the shadow and murmur. I'm open and clean. We have this statement here at City. If we hide, we die. When we come in the light, we live. And so we choose to do this. We choose not to be afraid if someone rejects us. And this is a big deal. I'm not trying to, I know I'm making statements that it may be at a fast pace, but this is a big deal for us. And you and I can overcome that and we can decide I'm going to be what God's called me to be. I'm going to be a peacemaker. How many want to be a peacemaker in Jesus' name? Amen. Life's too short to wonder what someone else thinks of us. Now, we all do it. Don't we all do it? But, 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 but we choose to overcome that and we choose to avoid this trap. So... How do you and I, from these verses here in just a moment, I'm going to break down. How do you and I choose to overcome people pleasing? Notice the language that the Apostle Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 4 through 8. I want to give you three things from these verses that are practical steps you and I can practice to not be a people pleaser and really overcome those tendencies and be what Jesus has called us to be. Can someone say Amen. Notice in verse one, in verse two, or in verse four, excuse me, of those verses I read, the Apostle Paul had straight up language. He said, Our purpose is to please who? God, not people. So you and I are practical steps of overcoming for some of us this huge mountain, this huge deal. Others it's not. If it's not for you, please take notes anyway, because I believe this will empower us in our life in general or help someone else. So the first practical step that we choose is we choose to please God. We live our life with the notion that I am to seek God's approval over other people's approval. That's a big deal. And the Apostle Paul said, I'm not here to please people. I'm here to please God. I want his approval because, after all, he's my judge, and I'm going to be with him for eternity. And so... You know, he's, he's eternal, and that's greater than the temporal. And so I seek to live life not by what other people think, but by what he thinks of me. I know I'm cool, not because you think I'm cool. I'm cool because God said I'm cool. And you're cool too. Because of what God says we are. Amen? So we choose to please God. We seek this. And so please note uh, these couple of, of statements. And, lean, and just please lean into this. When I please God, I have peace in my life. When I seek to please people, I'm always wondering if I'm good enough. So if we're walking around, am I good enough and this and that, then, and I've been there, you know, and preachers are weird people. I mean, trust me. So, so all of us get it on us. No matter where you're at, if you don't know Jesus, receive him today. If you have, then keep growing in your faith. And discover who you are. Team up and make a difference for someone else. But, the, but I believe here's the deal. You and I, when we please God, peace comes into our life. When we're pleasing people, we're always wondering, are we good enough? I like this. If I seek to please God, now it may not happen right away, but if I seek to please God, he will cause me to be healthy in my life. And please note this. Everyone, please hear me. I learned this in 2007 with my wife. When we get healthy, things around us get healthy. It's easy for us to say, when they get healthy, I'll get healthy. That's not true. When I get healthy, my situation can get healthy. Thank you for one good on the front row. She don't count. She's staff. I'm just saying. (laughs) When, 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 When we get healthy, or the people around us get healthy. So I learned that. When I got better, my marriage got better. Not when my wife got better. When I got better, my marriage got better. 
When I got better, I got closer to God. When I got better, I became a better son, a better a brother, a better father, etc. I had to get better. So when I pleased God, I'm talking about three steps to overcome people pleasing. When I when I pleased God, I truly got free and I got healthier on the inside. So when you and I please God, he causes us to be healthy. Now, what's the practical steps of pleasing God? I could preach on Hebrews 11. We could go read the Bible and, and you know, go to church and pray. And I, would, and I would hope all of us do all those things. I would love for you to be here every weekend. I'm amazed and honored that everyone's here. I love doing this with you. But I'm going to go higher than church attendance and Bible reading and prayer. All that's important. I'm not, I'm not minimizing that. I would say this. The greatest thing you and I can do to please God is to simply give God our heart. And I know that's ambiguous, and I wish it wasn't, but I would just say this, and I've said this before here. All of us know what it's like as an individual to open our heart to someone, and all of us know what it's like to close our heart to someone. We maybe can't define it, but we can feel it. We know when we're in front of somebody, when our heart is open, we're talking, we're sharing, we're trusting. Maybe it's romance, maybe it's platonic, but we know that, and we feel that, and we also know when we're in front of somebody and we're like, I don't trust anything. And my heart is totally shut down. And all of us know that feeling. We may not be able to define it, but we can feel it. I would ask you and me and those online to simply open up our heart to God every day. This is not a religious game. This is not to pretend. This is not to do anything else, but rather other than having a real relationship with God. And guess what? The holy God of heaven wants to be with us as imperfect people. And, we, and if you and I will let our heart be touched by God, the Bible says that guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it comes everything in our life. So if we don't give our heart to God, our heart can get crooked. When I give my heart to God, it may still be crooked, but it's going to get straight with his power and love. So how do I please God to overcome people pleasing? I simply, and I wish I could tell you how to do this. I don't know how to tell you, but I know that all of us know what I'm talking about. As people, we open up our heart and we say, God have me. Now I'm gonna give you a story of my father and mother who did this for me and they pleased God and my siblings over pleasing people and the benefits have been astounding. My family was a part of a, of a, of a, of a group that was old school. No sports, no card playing, uh, no movies, um, no anything. <laughs> and and uh, basically, and my dad, you know, my grandfather played in the NBA. Um, you know, he's he's a hero to my family. His pictures in Butler, you know, uh, Hinkle Fieldhouse. His pictures in where the Pacers play. So 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 sports, and he was a great basketball player too. So sports was huge in in his family. So when he got saved, you know, he came into this group and he said, okay, no sports. And then he saw me, I was getting in trouble, I was wild, I was rambunctious. And he said to me later, he said he knew that I would not fit in this group, that I just was too wild. <laughs> just pray for me, amen. <laughs> and, and so I brought home, in second grade, I brought home a little slip that said, you know, baseball or basketball tryouts. I forget what season it was, but it was one of those. And he said to me, he saw that and he just really felt from God, what am I doing? I got to change this. My family's got to get, you know, we got to get in a different environment. And from that moment, he made a decision based on what was best for his family versus what other people thought in this religious group. So he got out of that group. He said, we are playing sports. I was goofy. I, you know, I ran on my heels. I was afraid of the ball. Uh, nothing was right about it. And, uh, but he stepped out. And then my mom and dad got crucified from church people about that decision. And people sometimes still say we're crazy. That's all right. I saw my dad, as I grew up, I saw my dad make decisions based on pleasing God versus what people thought of him. He even changed the midweek service because old school church was Sunday morning, come on somebody, Sunday night and Wednesday night. Keep it tight and right. That's what they used to say, right? So, he changed Wednesday to Thursday so he could come see my sports games. He changed the trajectory. So many of us, if we're honest, whether we overtly know that we you know, are people pleasers or not, we tend to make decisions based on what someone else will think of us. When God is asking us to make decisions, what did he say? 
What's best for your family? What's best for your faith, for your marriage, for your kids? So I started working on my game, getting better. I'll never forget, I have so many good memories from this. But I remember one time in junior high, I was, I was playing, and I shot a, a three-pointer, and I made it, and I turned to the crowd. I was like, yeah, what's up? Yeah, I, was, I was getting them all worked up. I was a little rascal. I was crazy. I was doing this, and I looked up in the, in the stands, and there was my dad cheering me on. Yeah! And then when I missed a shot, he would yell, air ball, when everyone was quiet. We would have never had those memories. I got to play with people that were, were later play in the NBA. My friends were from Africa, from Indonesia, from the Philippines, from all over the world. I got to gain confidence, and really it was God's anointing through his decision helping me and my siblings be forged in the personality he wanted us to be. But it all started when my dad said, I'm not going to please people, I'm going to please God. Are you with me? So I want to encourage you to overcome people-pleasing and please God. Let's go to the next one. In the next verse, he says, we did not use flattery. And I love this language. We didn't use flattery and we didn't pretend to be your friends. That's awesome. So we overcome people-pleasing by choosing to please God. Number two, we overcome people-pleasing by being real. So folks, you and I... We make a decision that we're not going to be people that use flattery. Flattery is I'm saying just BS to you, not meaning anything I'm saying, but I'm just blowing smoke to get something. Usually flattery is used to get something. So I want to make you feel good to get my way. We don't do that. Paul said, I don't do that. He didn't do that. So we don't do that. We choose to be real, authentic people. Jesus said, and the Old Testament says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. And so we don't pretend to be friends. We make a decision, I'm either your friend or I'm not your friend. We just make a decision. We're not here to, you know, pretend I'm either it or I'm not. And, and, and Jesus said in the book of Revelation, he prefers us, he, would say, I mean, he said, I'd rather you be Anyone know this verse? I'd rather you be hot or just be cold, but don't be milk toast bread, just wet, soggy bread. Don't be that. Either be hot or be cold. Same idea. Either be, you know, either be true or don't be it at all. So we overcome people pleasing by making the decision that I am not going to use flattery. I'm not going to pretend. I'm going to be authentic. I'm not going to manipulate to get my way. I'm going to be real. Because the Apostle Paul said in these verses, we didn't pretend to be your friends to get your money. So when you and I are not people pleasers and we're authentic and, we're, and we are real for the point's sake, is God's my source. I don't have to manipulate. I don't have to use flattery. I don't have to brown nose. I don't have to do anything. I can just be real to who I am because God's my source. He will promote me. He will prosper me. He will do whatever he wants me to do. I don't have to use people because God will help me. So I want to encourage us. We choose to be authentic, real people. We don't choose to pretend. We don't choose to put on a, I mean, a show. We just choose to be us. We just choose to be us. We just choose that we are just satisfied with us. And we're not using any other form in that. We're just being who we are. I think people respond to being real. In fact, a great leader right now in the um, the body of Christ says this. Every podcast, he said, people, uh, he says, people don't want perfect leaders. People would rather follow leaders that are not always right, but that are real. We don't need to pretend that we have all the answers. When I'm a real person, I admit that, hey, I'm me, and I have flaws, and that's okay. What's the practical steps of of being a real person or being authentic? I know uh, for the point we're saying we are real. Authentic is another word we could use. What's the practical steps we can take? Well, this is basic from last week's message. We just choose to be honest people. We're not lying. We're not you know, shading truth. We're just telling the truth in love. What about this? Um, We choose to respond versus react. This is a big statement we have at City. We're not just reacting to everything emotionally. Oh, yeah, you know. Think. I've done that before. Trust me, I've done that so many times. All of us have. But we choose to step back and say, I'm not going to react to this because I've learned when I react, I mess up. How about you? 
I'm going to respond and be real in my response. So we overcome people-pleasing through what the Bible says, because we know it's a dangerous trap to people-please, but the Lord is safe. So Jesus is safe when we please God. We are safe when we choose to be real people, and, and, and we're just real. Can someone say amen? amen? And then the final one is, is in the, the last verse we read in verse 8. He says, not only did we share the good news, God's good news with you, but he said we shared our very lives. So I want to encourage you for this last one, and maybe these final two are kind of connected. Well, they are, but I think they're a little bit different too. So we are real as the second. Number three for your notes is we choose to be open. We are open people. What I mean by that is the Apostle Paul said, we just didn't preach a message to you. We opened up our lives to you. Okay, that's what he said. I'm just preaching right from the scripture, okay? Just write down, boom, boom, boom. He said, I, did, I didn't come to this ancient church in, uh, in Greece and just kind of blah, blah, blah and leave. I opened up my heart and let you into my world. You and I overcome people pleasing by choosing to be people, and this is big, and I'm not saying with every person, you know, please hear me in context. I'm not saying, you know, whatever. I'm saying with wisdom, you and I choose to be open people. And when, we, when we're open people, what we're saying is, is we willingly admit. When we're open, it, it breeds confidence. And what we're saying is, I don't have it all together. Open people admit when they make a mistake. Open people will say, I need help. Open people do this as well. And I say this a lot here at City, uh, and I'll uh, define it. Open people embrace their story. Now, I've seen if you're a Christ follower, if you're not, please receive Jesus today. That's the, I mean, it's the greatest step. And then after we receive Jesus, I've seen people embarrassed about where they've come from, ashamed, guilty. Now, godly sorrow is good. I'm, I'm sorrowful for everything I've done that's wrong. I'm not saying that. I'm not proud of it, but I also own it. And I'm willing to talk about it because God has done marvelous things in my life. It's very important that you and I break off guilt and shame away from our lives. Now, maybe we're guilty in a true, in a true way. Maybe, yeah, absolutely. I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying that in Jesus, we overcome shame. We overcome just feelings of guilt, and he cleanses us because anyone that comes to Christ is a new person. Old things have passed away. All things become new. You know, the, I mean, after you and I come to Jesus, one of the greatest things we can give to God and give to other people is our story. We're not all going to be Billy Graham. We're not all going to be, you know, some you know, great singer. We're not all going to be famous. But, man, all of us have a story. And the more we own it and get healed in it, the more we can share it and we become open people. The reason why this is, I think, huge in conquering people-pleasing is because I'm overcoming what you think of me. I'm not embarrassed of what I've done. I'm not embarrassed or ashamed. I don't have shame on my life. I'm in the light. I live. And so I can freely tell you I'm imperfect. I don't have to pretend. I can tell you, hey, you know, God's working on me. Hey, I went to see a psychologist, and God's helping me through you know, anxious thought power. I don't, I'm not afraid of that because I'm clean. When we're not open, we're like, man, I don't want people to know that. God, I, I'm strong on the Lord. You know, this is what we do in church. I'm strong on the Lord and the power of his might. I'm, 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 I'm strong all the time. No, you're not. I'm blessed and highly favored. Sometimes, sometimes you're not. You know? I mean, really, sometimes you are, sometimes you're not. I'm anointed. Sometimes you are, sometimes you're not. <laughs> Let's be honest. Let's have honesty. I was rejected. I was just, but open people do that. This is how you and I can overcome people pleasing. Now, before I close, what's the practical steps you and I can take with being an open person? I could say a lot of things on that, but I want to just give just one, just, I think, a nugget on being open. Remember this statement, and I've said it a lot here. Gayla mentioned it when she preached recently. To be forgiven, we confess our sins to God. Quite clearly, the Bible says, we confess to him, 
He is faithful and just to forgive us. Aren't you glad that God forgives us of our sins? It's amazing. And to be healed, James 5, 16. Confess your faults one to another that you may be healed. I've said that before, and I'll keep on saying it because you know why? I've lived it, I live it now, and I've been better for it. The people in my life, like my dad, Brandon, Pastor Marcus, the psychologist I see, of course my wife, those people in my life that I talk to, I have been made better and healthier by being open. And it empowers me to not be a people pleaser. It empowers me to be a peacemaker. Are you with me today? I want to encourage you, before we move forward, any area of your life today, you would say, you know what, Pastor Dave? Yeah, man, I'm, I'm people pleasing. I need to stop it. First off, it's easy for us to people please. It's kind of the easier route, isn't it? Peacekeeping's easy. Shh. Everyone just be happy. Shh. Let's avoid the pink elephant. Let's not talk about it. Don't talk about it. Shh. Don't, 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 don't. Remember, I love what Gayla was so open about in her message. Remember a couple weeks ago? She said, she used to tell her, her, her husband, Pastor Seth, you're not going to tell anyone what happens in this house. It's easy to shh takes courage in the midst of fear to say, no, I'm going to address it. Let's have that crucial conversation. Let's have that confrontation. Let's be honest. Let's get healed. Let's come to reconciliation. Let's come to a higher point. God, heal my heart. And so we choose today, before we stand, is we choose to avoid the trap. We choose to be safe by pleasing God giving him our heart and doing that. We choose to be real, authentic. We choose to be honest people. We choose to be open. And we confess things to the right person, the right person, okay? And we're healed from it. And we're just an open book. That's what Paul said, I share my life. And in that, big or small steps every day, somehow the power of the Holy Spirit helps you and me overcome people-pleasing. We avoid the trap and we are safe. How many believe this today? Amen. Can't Jesus help us do this? He can help us do this. Please step forward and be a peacemaker. As your head is bowed today, you would say today, Pastor Dave, you know, I've never connected. We call it connect with God. You would say, I've never connected with God in my life. That means I've never asked Jesus in my life. I'm not talking about being perfect. I'm not talking about being religious. I'm not talking about joining a church. I'm talking about asking the living Christ into your life and your faith is put in him. If you've never done that and or you would say, I have done that at one point in my life, but this morning I'm far from that. I'm far from God. And I need to get back to where I should be. As heads are bowed, if that's you, if one of those positions are you, this is your day to step through it and make a change and let God do it. So if that's you right now, go ahead and raise your hand to heaven. I want to pray for you to receive Jesus today. God bless you. God bless you. Awesome. God bless you. People coming to Jesus this morning. Thank you so much for doing that. We love you. Thank you so much. It's the greatest decision any of us can make. Now, some would say, you know, Pastor Dave, I can see tendencies. Yep. Uh, I can see tendencies of a, of a people pleaser, and I want God to help me just take one you know, step or multiple steps. Or maybe you would say, I'm really not a people pleaser, but I want to be fortified in being a peacemaker. Either one. And you would say, God, help me. If that's you, raise your hand. I want to pray for you today in this room. Thank you. Good. Hands up all over. Thank you. And, and, and follow me out loud so no one's left out. And please say, Lord Jesus, my heart is yours, and I run to you. Please forgive me for anything that's wrong. I turn from that. I say yes to you. I'm yours. And I live my life as you want me to, through your standard. And through the Holy Spirit, I choose to be a peacemaker. And I choose to overcome people pleasing. In Jesus' name, amen. Prayer team, join me here in the front. And as they're coming, 
If you want to raise your hand, you can. You don't have to, but I'm going to raise mine. I'm going to pray for all of us right now. I pray for me and you and those online that all of us would be built up and full of courage with the Holy Spirit, that we would not be dictated by the crowd, by what other people think or don't think. We're moved by God, and we make decisions based on what God wants us to do. We please God, we choose to be real, and we choose to be open, and we are better for it, and we are healthy for it. Lord, and we thank you for coming through us every day. In Jesus' name, everyone said, amen.